Hello everybody. Again, my name is Yahya Ithawi. I am a consultant neonatologist and this is uh, one episode of series of videos about neonatal ventilation. And today we will give a short um, idea or a short uh, slides, few slides about uh, some modes of the ventilation. Not all of them, but it's a, a general good idea about uh, mode of conventional ventilation. The first one, what we call it conventional mechanical ventilation. Uh, uh, the conventional mechanical ventilation provide minute ventilation by giving the tidal volume and respiratory rate. In this mode of ventilation, the patient has no any contribution. It's a completely uh, dependent on the machine. So the operator set all the values, the PIP, the PEEP, the rate, the inspiratory time, and uh, it will provide exactly the set like the measurement. There will be no change. And because the patient is not contributing and to avoid patient fighting the ventilator because the ventilator, the patient is not driving the ventilator. Therefore, um, most of time this machine, this type of mode work with uh, when the patient is completely paralyzed or on very heavy sedation without any respiratory effort or in a comatose patient. Uh, it, it, the problem with this machine is um, there is some sort of unphysiological ventilation because whatever set will be given, it will not consider the patient contribution and it will not require any patient uh, uh, work. And therefore, it's um, usually an avoidable mode unless the patient is comatose or completely paralyzed and we rarely use this type of ventilation sometimes we use it during transport especially with the old ventilator because the luxury of different type of modes on old transport ventilators are not available however the new ventilators um, uh, the new ventilators, even the transport, you can easily select some, um, you know, the various modes of ventilation of conventional of mechanical ventilation, uh, depending on the patient. So in conventional mechanical ventilation, if you look at the graphs, you can see the pressure graphs and you can see that there is first mandatory ventilation and you can see that the patient will never contribute to anything. And you can see there is another mandatory ventilation. You can see um, that here the inspiratory time is a little bit short. So there is inflow and there is outflow of the first breath and there is inflow and outflow of the second breath. And you can see the tidal volume is fixed and there is no difference between two tidal volumes of the two breaths. The other mode, what we call it um, assisted control or um, uh, some people call it SIPPV or other people call it PTV, patient trigger ventilation. Assisted mean I will provide the assisted ventilation, I will help, but also I will give the control or the backup. SIPPV is synchronized intermittent positive pressure ventilation. In this mode of ventilation, the operator determines the minimal minute ventilation by setting the respiratory rate and tidal volume or the patient can contribute to more uh, rates because it will be supported and more tidal volume so the minute ventilation is not what the, the uh, operator sent but the operator set with the, the lowest minute ventilation and the minute ventilation is um, uh, is the uh, result of respiratory rate and tidal volume of each breath the other things in this mode, the patient trigger the uh, respiratory support and therefore there should be a trigger set. Okay, and if you want to train the diaphragm or if you want to uh, try to wean the patient, you can do it through trigger, you can do it through volume, of course, volume guarantee, but through triggers. So the more flow 
the patient should generate to trigger the assistance from the ventilator, the harder we will be on the patient. So if you want to train the diaphragm, you make the trigger low, let's say 0.2 liter per minute of flow, and then you increase it to 0.5 or 2.6 and 0.7 and 2 until you make it very difficult for the patient to uh, ask the ventilator to help and the ventilator and the patient will do everything because you are setting very high trigger uh, the patient should achieve uh, before the machine can help and therefore you can you can you can train the diaphragm slowly before you extubate example of this mode of ventilation the ventilator set the rate at 40 breath per per minute and a tidal volume of 4 mL per kg so if the patient is 2 kilo it will be 8 mL so the lowest possible ventilation multiplicate 40 times 8 will be 320 uh, mL per minute and therefore uh, the, uh, the, 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 but the, 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 the patient can get more tidal volume if he or she wants and if she can. Now, if the patient trigger additional five breaths above the 40, uh, which is the uh, above the preset, let's say 20, the ventilator will do 8 mL for each additional breath. And the minute ventilation will be 40. So there is a wrong number. Um, this should be 40, not not 20. Uh, so the, the, the minute ventilation will be like the five extra breaths will be provided and the patient will get more uh, tidal volume than the ventilator uh, set. Now this is the graphic representations of the assisted control. So all the breaths are supported and therefore you will never see spontaneous breath. So you'll see two type breaths the one assisted and the one mandatory. You will never see a spontaneous breath because all the breaths are supported. So you can see this is mandatory, this is mandatory, but this is assisted breaths. And it's clearly here that the patient did some, some, some change in the flow and some tidal volume, uh, some achieve some tidal volume and then he gets um, uh, help. And you can see the uh, the uh, inspiratory time is beautiful because the flow starts from zero before inflation back to zero, pulls a little bit before do the exhalation, and you can see the tidal volume is achieved. Um, um, so there is uh, mandatory, assisted, mandatory, no spontaneous uh, breath because all the breaths are uh, supported, and therefore we call the rate in assisted control a backup rate. Also, the uh, operator can set the inspiratory time and the expiratory time. In this mode of ventilation, also the um, inspired tidal volume and expired tidal volume is measured. And therefore, the machine will find the difference. If there is a uh, difference, then uh, some of the tidal volume are being lost, and that's what we call it leak. And the machine also will measure the leak the amount of the difference between inspiratory tidal volume and expiratory tidal volume. So let's say if uh, 10 mL is going in, but 8 mL went out, then there is 2 mL we are losing it. So 2 out of uh, 10 is 20%. So the leak here is 20%. So also the inspiratory time is, is set. The relation between inspiration and expiration is set although the also all, all, it like the cmv the operator also will set the uh, pip and peep there are other parameters sometimes you need to set like the rising time and 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 some other uh, parameters you you can you can use the imv is exactly like a a, a, a assisted control or sibbv or uh, uh, PTV. However, there is no synchronization. The only difference from assisted control, and this mode is not acceptable. Uh, you only use it in like in CMV, you only use it for patient who is comatose or he's not triggering. Uh, but however, uh, if the patient is not triggering and use AC, it will be exactly the same. There is no difference. because. Uh, but once the patient start to breathe, uh, then uh, you get IMV. Uh, also, um, 
the assisted control will be like MV if you increase the trigger and the patient cannot uh, trigger and therefore all the machine is, is, is. But again, there will be no synchrony. Um, again, the uh, minute ventilation set by the ventilator will be the minimum and the patient can increase minute ventilation uh, if he or she wants. So this is an example of IMV. You can see that there is mandatory breath. There is spontaneous breath that is not being held. Another spontaneous being not held. There is another mandatory because of the inspiratory time. And you can see the patient also trying to breathe. So you have, if you look at the pressure, you could look at the last breath. The first breath is mandatory. The second and the third one is also mandatory. I mean spontaneous, sorry, the second and third. The fourth breath, you can see two types of breaths, the mandatory at the first, and then the patient starts to breathe. And it's also uh, clear in the flow curve. You can see the first one is the mandatory, and then two spontaneous low flow, and then you can see the last breath is composed of two breaths. You can see the tidal volume in the first breath achieved because it's mandatory, in the second and third is not achieved because it's spontaneous. And you can see the last one has a little bit of notch because um, it's been two types of breaths. The uh, ventilator and the patient are trying to give the tidal volume at the same time because there is um, asynchrony. The uh, uh, SIMV is theme of SIMV. So you set the lowest and the um, ventilator only will give the mandatory. It will not support the spontaneous. The difference, the patient and the ventilator will never fight. They always synchronize. So um, if the, uh, ventil the ventilator will wait, wait until the patient uh, trigger to the set that triggered you use, and then will deliver that, and they will never fight. So always synchronize between patient and the ventilator, but they are exactly like IMV, this IMV. And therefore, um, you know, the, uh, if we rank, uh, I will write IMV and then assisted control, conventional mechanical ventilation, assisted control, IMV, then SIMV. I mean, the, how much the patient, I mean, the machine is, is, is providing help. The level of support is maybe need to modify if the uh, hemodynamic consequences of post pressure ventilation develop. Uh, the problem with SIMV, uh, because the spontaneous breath is not supported, then uh, you can, the limit, the, you will have a limit of PEEP that you can provide. Because remember, the PEEP is provided by the machine through whole time. And, but at the same time, when the machine is not supporting the breath, or spontaneous breath, then and it provides PEEP always. So when the patient starts to breathe, it will breathe against the PEEP because PEEP is always provided. And therefore, with SIMV, the advice to use low PEEP. But if you want to use high PEEP, it's probably better to use another mode. Uh, or increasing the rate. So once you increase the rate, let's say rate 60, you know, SIMV becomes like um, probably like uh, um, SIPVV or PTV or assisted control because, um, you know, rarely the patient will be able to generate. Sometimes it can, but rarely they can uh, breathe more than 60. The 60 is a little bit high rate, but it can happen. But however, if you want to uh, use high P, use higher rate with SIMV or switch to the PTV or, or PSV. And here is the SIMV. You can look at the pressure wave in the first uh, line. You can see the first breath is mandatory. You can see there is a spontaneous uh, two breaths. The first, the second, and third in the pressure curve is not supported. But you can see also that the last one is also mandatory. And um, 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 although the patient is trying to help, uh, if you look at the same uh, last breath in the middle curve, in the flow curve, you can see that the patient is helping. However, the machine synchronizes it with the patient. And you can see the mandatory first breath in tidal volume exactly look to the assisted in the uh, last one or, 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 or never. The, 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 uh, you can see the SIMV assisted window. It's exactly like the first mandatory. Uh, although it's not assisted, 
it's a spontaneous and the machine and the machine also provide at the same time between the first and last breath however they are not um, they looks like same because it's synchronized but you can see in the flow curve in the last breath uh, they are not the same the first and the last one is not the same however the machine deliver the same pressure same tidal volume so the difference between IMV and SIMV is always synchronization uh, you can see uh, also the um, SIMV again uh, you can see uh, when you set the ventilator at the beginning uh, you can see that the first breath uh, on the pressure on the flow on, on tidal volume is a little bit low the second breath the machine give more and it's past all the lines the limit lines to achieve that pressure until it reach the third one it reach the uh, the standard volume that you want uh, and you can see the first one is low the second one is high um, and and the, the last one is normal however even in the second one if you look at the pressure curve they will never pass the limit uh, uh, pressure that you set for the uh, you set for the for the patient now if you look at the uh, mode of ventilation you can see the black color is uh, how much the machine is contributing and the uh, white color is how much the patient is contributing and you can see the level of CPAP. So you can see that um, CMV is mostly provided by the machine. Um, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, R, uh, the APRV, and I didn't mention this because it's mostly adult mode, is, um, is a little bit different because we have PIP and we have PIP. In APRV, uh, the machine will provide continuous, continuous PIP, continuous positive inspiratory pressure, and with when and it's sometime uh, uh, when the patient uh, try to, uh, it will provide a PIP. So always provide consistent PIP, and then sometime provide PIP. So the PIP will be low, and so it's a reverse. It's a reverse ventilation. We don't use it in in unit. We have the assisted control. Um, because it's uh, provide the assisted, but also the patient provides. So it's 50-50. SIMV is um, we would, we are not helping them, the uh, the uh, the the ba baby because we are only giving the backup rate. So it's more uh, with the IMV. It's not synchronized. And PSV um, um, PSV is is same like assisted control. The difference is you give wide uh, inspiratory time, and the patient actually can breathe. Uh, and decide how much inspiratory time he or she wants. So PSV is like assisted control. So it provides the uh, mandatory and it assists the spontaneous. The difference is it's more like physiological because the in assisted control, the inspiratory time is fixed, while in PSV, the inspiratory time, you set it wide, but the patient can determine what he or she wants uh, during inhalation uh, uh, up to the maximum inspiratory time that you set. Here is a little bit of, um, of comparison between different type of modes. So in, uh, um, in, in CMV, uh, the, uh, the strategy uh, uh, in a CMV can be volume limited, can be pressure limited. And the ventilator trigger, yes. The patient in both strategy is not helping. In volume limited, use the volume to cycle. And the cycle is, when we talk about cycle, is how we change from inspiration to expiration, from pause to inspiration, from inspiration to pause, from pause to expiration, and so on. So in uh, CMV, uh, either the, the cycling depending on the volume or sometimes the time. So we tell the ventilator during that time, give inflation, then that time, pause, then that time, uh, give exhalation. And you can see the mandatory provided, yes, assisted is not supported and spontaneous is not supported. So there is neither synchrony, there is no, no assist for, no, there is no, so you can see only wave in the conventional, the only wave that you will see is the mandatory. You will not see assisted, you will not see spontaneous. In assisted control, again, there is two types. Of course, in neonate, we only use pressure limited. And even in acid, we use a pressure limited. So there should, can be volume limited, can be pressure limited. 
Is the ventilator providing help in both? Yes. Is the patient also provide? Yes. How we cycle? In volume limited, we use volume. And in pressure limited, we use time. Is, is there is any mandatory? Yes. Is there is assisted? Yes. Is there a spontaneous? No, because a ventilator will provide any breath it will provide to the machine. In IMV, there is also volume limited and there is pressure limited. So, um, uh, um, is the ventilator provide help? Yes. Is there is a trigger? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, but in IMV or intermittent mandatory ventilation, there will be no volume trigger. It's all time. So, do you see mandatory? Yes. Do you see uh, assisted? Yes. Do you see spontaneous? Uh, uh, yes. But the problem is asynchronized. In PSV, it's only pressure limited. There is no volume limited. And that's another difference between PSV and assisted control. Um, is the ventilator providing trigger? No, because only the patient control the ventilator. Um, in PSV, the cycle can be flow, can be pressure, and can be time. Is there is any mandatory? No, because if the patient does not breathe, the machine uh, will not provide unless you set a backup rate. Is there is assisted? Yes. Is there a spontaneous? No. So it's always assisted. The ventilator will assist. The, the patient will drive the ventilator. Now CPAP is just a flow. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, tube compensation depends on the mode, uh, whether it will be provided or not. There is a little bit comparison between SIMV and assisted control, or also people call it SIPPV or PTV. And I did the comparison because they are very common, because they are most uh, uh, most commonly used forms of ventilation. This is uh, better patient ventilator synchrony, but however, this is more, to more critically ill patients. So if you're critically ill patient, I will go with assisted control. If you want to wean the patient or the patient awake, I don't want to sedate the patient, I go with SIMV. This one is also you can train the patient because you are not helping the patient. You are only providing the backup rate. So the lower the backup rate, the more the patient will depend on him or herself. And therefore, you can train. Also, if you drop the, if you increase the trigger, you can train the diaphragm and the chest wall. This one is you're not helping the patient because there is a mandatory. And once the patient starts to breathe, uh, the machine will help. So um, um, it, it is, it's not a good machine to uh, preserve the respiratory function and, and, and uh, respiratory function and, and also train the patient. Um, however, if you increase the trigger, the assisted control from that point will be like SIMV. Uh, the, because the, the patient is, the, the, the rate provided to the patient is a little bit low, only the backup rate in SIMV. So probably the auto PEEP is very low, not like the assisted control. The risk of having auto PEEP is low because uh, you're providing, you're supporting the backup rate that you set and any patient. So if the patient start to breathe very tight, if the kidney can, let's say he's breathing 70, all the 70 will provide it, there will be no time for the inhalation to finish. And therefore, the next breath will start before the first one finish, and then the curve will not have time to return to the PEEP, the set PEEP, and therefore, it will start a little bit higher. And the uh, starting point and the actual PEEP, there will be an auto PEEP. In PSV, when we did the comparison, so the clinician, as we said, if you remember, it's always pressure limited, the clinician set uh, the pressure to control. It cannot be volume. And the patient control the TI, and the physician will give a little bit long TI. Uh, it's support the spontaneous uh, respiration. Uh, it's sometime because uh, the patient control the IT, and it's only pressure limited, and especially if you add VG as a, as a, as a adjunct mode, it looks like a most physiological ventilation. You can train the diaphragm and respiratory. So some people, you can use it as a sole mode, but some people use it as expiratory mode. Uh, you, most of people combine it with VG, for example, like um, close to, it never be physiological ventilation, but it's close to physiological ventilation and the machine driving the ventilator. But remember, if you use it for a long time, especially for a premature baby, the patient will, because the patient is driving the ventilator, the patient will, might get exhausted 
Um, and how I resemble that is uh, it's like asking a, a drunk to drive a car. You know, there is a problem at the end will happen. So the longer he, he or she drives when she drank or he drank, uh, the more likely to have an accident. Exactly when you use a PSV for a long time. Uh, the patient, you're asking the, the patient to drive the inspiratory time, to drive the pressure, to drive the ventilator. Um, so you're asking, and, and what time you'll be exhausted? So if you're planning to use it for a long time, it's better not to use this mode, although this exhaustion with combining it with VG will be less. Um, so it's better to use it with the PSV, and when you use it, uh, use it for extubation, and when you use it for extubation, try to use low rate, uh, to keep the patient, um, you know, low packup rate. If the patient is exhausted and cannot breathe, you can give the packup rate, and uh, use the packup rate and let the patient drive the ventilator for two, three hours. And if he, she can do that, then probably they are more suitable uh, for extubation. Even, if, especially if the set parameter like the PIP, the PI, the PIP, and the PIP are low. So this is a, an, a graphic representation of the uh, pressure support ventilation. You can see whatever uh, the flow you give, it will never uh, exceed the pressure limit. And you can see we have various type of flow. And so uh, this is the flow limit, but this is the flow target. Um, so we'll never exceed a flow. And you can see the tidal volume is variable depending on the patient. So again, this is another comparison. I don't want to go through all of that, but you can freeze and look at it and see if you can, uh, if you can understand what it is. And again, I can answer. And you can see in, um, uh, in uh, what we call it, uh, uh, this mode of the ventilation, or what they call it airway positive release ventilation, you have only PIP, you don't have PEEP. So you have high PIP, most of the time and then all of a sudden you get low PIP or I can call it P. So you can have high PIP, PIP, high PIP and all of a sudden you get low PIP and then you go back. So it's a kind of reverse ventilation. We don't use it in, in mode. Sometimes we can combine the mode of ventilation to get bad benefits. So you can get ACVG which is a combination of assisted control plus, plus volume guarantee or you can get a SIMV plus VG or a PSV plus VG. Or sometimes you can get a um, assisted control, so you can give the packer rate as assisted, and the spontaneously assisted, so mandatory as assisted, and the spontaneously assisted. Uh, so you give, sorry, you give the mandatory as assisted control or SIPPV, and the spontaneously being assisted by PSV, and again you can get VG. Uh, you can use a CISIS control or, or PSV or even the same with VIVE or variable inflow, variable, uh, variable inflation, variable exhalation. And that's because it's a variable, it causes turbulence, and because it causes turbulence, it was CO2. So if you have a high tidal volume, high rate, and you still have high CO2 and you don't want to go to high frequency, you can use VIVE as adjunct mode to wash more CO2 because it causes turbulence. And once you remember, um, tidal volume is changing the flow, that means turbulence, and it's the same idea when you use high frequency. You use turbulence, and then you use CO2. And thus I'm done with the uh, mode of ventilation, but with time I will speak on with one mode, one mode, I will give scenarios, and I hope you guys will understand it more. So by this I end this uh, session about mode of ventilation, and if you have any questions, just post it on YouTube, I'm going to answer. And I hope that I can do live uh, sessions uh, on ventilation uh, to answer questions. Thank you very much and have a good day.